Hey folks, Jim Thomas here, Fitness Management and Consulting, and welcome to our channel today. I appreciate y'all being here. And if you're new to the channel, uh, if you're finding us that very first time, you know, welcome as well. It's good to have you. And our topic for you today, it's nine things you should do to save a failing gym. Nine things you should do to save a failing gym. And so, whether you're starting something new, you know, this is a good criteria for your business planning. If you're already in business, even if you're doing well, you know, take a look at this so you don't have to do them, you know, maybe later on. Now, before we get into our topic here today, uh, just a quick reminder, you know, my focus, you know, my mission here in the channel is I want to be able to provide as much information as I can to as many people as I can across the globe. And the best way I can do that is when you choose to subscribe to the channel. So if you've not yet done so, please take a moment, hit that subscribe button. We appreciate it. If you've already done it, thank you. And then to learn more about me, learn more about my company and how we can help take your business to that next level, you know, be sure to check out those links below. And then for you folks that are opening a new gym and you need funding or you have an existing operation, you, know, you need some working capital, you know, we can help with funding for up to $400,000, completely unsecured, no restrictions on use, um, must have a minimum credit score of 680 or better in all three major credit bureaus, uh, Equifax, Experian, TransUnion, and then minimum income of 50000 per year each of the two previous years. And you can check the links below under financing and funding, uh, uh, several different options for you, you know, based on your unique situation. So with that said, let's get into our topic here today. Nine things you should do to save a failing gym. I want to give you some things to think about. And this comes from, you know, me talking to a lot of folks that call up and their business is, you know, in a tough situation. So let's look at some of this. Uh, number one, change your mindset. You know, got to be the biggest one, right? You know, let's change our mindset. I know I get on the phone sometimes with folks that are looking for help, but then they'll try to convince me why nothing will work. And I realize it gets tough. I understand that. That's why, you know, folks call. We need to work our way through that. But the message I want to give you is we are in the solutions business. Be focused on solutions. Don't just focus on identifying the problem. Give the power to the solution because there's always going to be something, okay? It's how we choose to focus. Focus on the solution. Go positive on this. And, you know, go positive, have a plan. You know, we write this stuff out. But we want to work on that mindset. And, and part of that, part of the challenge, I think, with that is it does involve having some accountability because if we're going positive or focused on solutions, we need to be accountable. Because if it's working, great. If it's not working, we need to fix it. But the one thing I have control over is me. You know, time of season, competition, uh, economy, I can't control any of that, but I can control my decisions and how I look at this. So I really want to encourage, if you're in this situation, look at mindset. And this will work at any level, no matter what you're doing, right? So we want to change our mindset. Let's be in the solutions business. Uh, number two, you know, perform a SWOT analysis. A SWOT analysis, you know, S-W-O-T. What are your strengths? Okay, look at your business. What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? Be objective here. You know, what are your weaknesses? What opportunities do you have? And what are the threats? What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? What are the opportunities? And what are the threats? And it's like when I start off, you know, any kind of a meeting or conversation, normally it's always going to be, hey, tell me what's working well and what's not. So what are we really good at? What are we not so good at? Okay. Where are there opportunities here and where are the threats? Okay. Really drill down on that. But you, I want to really encourage you. We want to be objective here. Okay. And again, we want to be, as we look at this, we want to be solution focused. Uh, number three, you want to understand your target market and your ideal client. You know, understand your target market and your ideal client. Who is your ideal client? Are you the, the gym around the corner? You know, the neighborhood gym? Is that what you are? Are you a boutique and you're more focused on the fit? Okay, trying to get more fit? You know, are you trying to focus on folks that haven't worked out in a while and, you know, they need to? Okay. You know, who is that ideal client? Understand your target audience. 
Okay, understand what you're trying to bring to the marketplace. And part of this, I would encourage, you know, checking out other clubs to understand, hey, what do you do better? You know, what is not being brought to the market that you can now bring? How can you create, you know, additional uh, differentiation in there? Um, number four, you know, things you should do to save a failing business, reduce cost and prioritize what you pay. Okay, let's talk about this a bit here. We want to reduce cost. Now, you want to reduce cost because we need to get control of this and we need to make sure we have money in the bank. Okay, the, the sidebar of this is you're never going to cut your way into growth. This is not a growth move. This is a let's save the business move. You know, as quick as we can, we want to get back into advancing and expanding you know, into the marketplace. And again, I talked earlier about financing and funding. You can check out links for that because you will need that at some point if we're trying to get this turned around. You just can't cut and, and have growth. But right now we want to reduce costs. So if you have programs that aren't working, okay, let's evaluate them. You got people that aren't producing, let's evaluate them, okay? Prioritize what you pay. You know, pay what keeps you in business. Pay what keeps you in business. Now, make sure you communicate with those that you don't pay, let them know what's going on. Let them know what your intentions are. Okay. Uh, number five, you know, manage your cash flow. You know, manage it. And you know, part of this is make sure you've got a budget. And you know, we're looking at you know dues line. You know, we're looking at maybe personal training. We're looking at supplements. We're looking at retail. Uh, maybe there's sublets in there. Let's really look at that cash flow because that cash flow is the thing. You know, we have to have money in the bank. Okay, make sure we really manage it, we really target it. You know, nothing should be spent without your approval. Everything's got to have your initials on it and, and some kind of code that you're going to give them. Okay, um, number six, I touched on this a bit ago, but talk to your creditors. You know, don't ignore them. Anyone that you're not paying, make sure you reach out to them. Let them know what the situation is. Let them know what's going on. Let them know what the intentions are. And indeed, you may end up, you know, having to settle with them. Okay, maybe it's a fifty cents and a dollar. You know, maybe you're going to pay it in a year. But let them know. Don't don't just ignore them. Okay, you have to communicate. The more you communicate, you know, it becomes a simpler process. When you don't, uh, you can you can get some ugly phone calls you know, if you're not careful. Uh, number seven on my list of nine things you should do to save a failing gym: organize your business. Now, the where I would start with this is, hey, I'd update my business plan. I would have plan of actions. I'd be teaching my staff how to write a plan of action. Because what we don't want to do, we just don't want to come in every day and react to this. We, we want to have a plan. What is the strategy for this? You know, you as the owner, okay, what is your plan? You know, how are you going to communicate with all your key staff? We want to let them know what's going on. We want to be authentic. We want to be... Uh, transparent. We want to have empathy, you know, for the situation that's going on for them. Okay. And, uh, but have it organized, have all your staff do this. And part of this can, is going to be staff training as well. Um, number eight, stop wasting time on repetitive tasks. Stop wasting time on repetitive tasks. And so take advantage of technology. Okay. Whether it be technology for email follow-up, for texting, for anything that can uh, that can be utilized with technology. You know, the repetitive tasks, the things we do over and over. Let's don't waste time on that. One of the things that I see, okay, and this is worth going back and taking a look. Whatever software that you're using, so many folks that I talk to, they're really not taking full advantage of the capabilities of that software. And so go in there and take a look and see what those capabilities are. You know, hop on a call with your rep for that company. Make sure you clearly understand it. Because like I say, in most cases, what I find to be true is that we really don't take full advantage uh, of those, um, the technology capabilities of our software. And then number nine on my list, always focus on your member. You know, things you should do to save a failing business. Always focus on your member. Okay. Job one. Okay. Whether it be in time of crisis or trying to save a failing business, whatever it might be, is you want to keep what you've got. And there's a direct correlation between the member experience and member attrition. Attrition is high. Member experience is likely low. Okay. So really focus on, you know, what can we do to, to deliver more value 
you know, a better experience, you know, to our customer. Some simple things like celebrating birthdays, celebrating membership anniversary days, uh, celebrating uh, member success stories, uh, following up with them if they're not using the gym on a regular basis, an onboarding program for new members to come in. There's a lot of things in there because what starts to happen if we do those, you really start to develop loyalty. And loyalty is ultimately what you're looking for. You know, what I like to talk about when it comes to the, the members and how we're going to deliver that is that good faith effort. You know, giving more than maybe what's expected. You know, giving super service you know, to that customer. So take a look at nine things that you should do to save a failing business. If you're, if you're just getting started, this can be the groundwork for really developing a business plan. If you're in business and it's not working like you want, there's a good chance you're going to see some answers um, in these nine bullet points. So folks, I appreciate you being here today. Again, my name is Jim Thomas. Um, you know, my focus, my mission here in the channel, uh, again, is I want to provide as much information as I can to as many folks as I can across the globe. And the best way I can do that is when you choose to subscribe to the channel. So if you've not yet done so, take a moment, hit that subscribe button. We appreciate it. And then to learn more about me, uh, learn more about my company and how we can help take your business to that next level, you know, be sure to check out those links below. And again, for you folks looking to open a new gym, you need funding, you have an existing operation, you need working capital, you know, we can help provide funding for up to $400,000, uh, unsecured funding, no restrictions on use, minimum credit score of 680 in each of the three major credit bureaus, minimum income of 50000 per year each of the two previous years. Be sure to check out those links below under financing and funding. We have several different options depending on your unique situation. So folks, again, we appreciate you being here today. We look forward to seeing y'all in the next video.